Hey, new Joker just dropped. So if you know me, you know I love this stuff and I got to talk about it. So uh, we have an official real look at the Joker in the Batman universe, the Matt Reeves Batman movie, which I made a whole video on. I love the movie very much. I'm also biased because I just, I love Batman. I'll pretty much take anything Batman. And at this point, I think the same goes for this Joker, who in the movie was credited as unnamed Arkham inmate or something like that. Uh, but here, now with this official look that they put out, this is actually a deleted scene from the movie. It's an alternative look at the Joker. And I like this way better than the Joker reveal we got. I do think that this one, this is a five minute long scene, right? You know, it might kind of take a little bit of the wind out of the Riddler's sails in terms of making the, the Riddler scary. So I, I understand why maybe they decided not to keep this in the movie, uh, but there's no denying, it's like a really cool scene. I love this dynamic, the whole Batman going to see the Joker to get his perspective on things. Uh, it's something that has been done many times in various Batman forms of media. Uh, and one of my favorite examples isn't even with the Joker necessarily, it's with Calendar Man in The Long Halloween. Uh, so again, a Long Halloween type of thing here with the movie taking a lot of inspirations from that, which is cool. Uh, but before I dive into the actual Joker itself, like I, I do really think this is a, a very cool way to use the Joker. Uh, when I put my video out for the movie, after the spoiler stuff, I said, I didn't really like that they're just going for the Joker again, like right away, relax, slow your roll. Matt Reeves, the director, did say that, you know, he might not necessarily use the Joker in the next movie. They're just establishing that, hey, there is a Joker in this world. The way I look at it, I feel like the movie studios can't help themselves. They're gonna wanna do Joker and go for it. And you can also argue that Batman isn't complete without Joker, and that's fine, I can kind of stand with that. But I do really like this idea more of like a slow build to this Joker. Like if this deleted scene is considered canon, and then we have the brief scene where he talks to the Riddler in the movie, I would love for them to, you know, they, they've talked about making a trilogy. I would love for the Joker not really to completely show up in the second one and continue to be teased or metal. And then the third one builds to that good Joker Batman confrontation, that payoff really sell that stuff. It can really sell like a slow build, a kind of fear of this Joker, this looming Joker threat. Uh, and I think that could work specifically because of how scary and gross and messed up they made him. So this is Barry Keoghan's uh, Joker interpretation, and I apologize to all my Irish folk out there. I'm trying my best with pronunciations, but I said in my previous video uh, that I'm still a little iffy on his performance, you know, his voice, his laugh and stuff like that. You know, every every Batman fan, every Joker fan is is particular about that stuff. And I'm still kind of at like the wait and see approach, but I do feel better after seeing this. And I think a lot of that goes with the look. Uh, first of all, we don't get like a direct look. Uh, we get a kind of obscured look and then close-ups of specific parts of his face. And I like what I'm seeing. First of all, him uh, blurry behind the glass, uh, that look, is incredible. It's also evocative of when uh, the Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker, was first teased. And I think that's just cool imagery. That being said, this is very much like they're going for the grotesque Joker, the scary, nasty Joker that a lot of people really dig. And I think uh, Scott Snyder's interpretation more recently is pretty good, you know, when the Joker cuts his face off and stuff. That can be really effective. And uh, Matt Reeves has said that they're possibly going for it being like it was like a birth defect type of thing, which is interesting, I don't know. But uh, I, I also like like that he does kind of look like he was he was dropped in a vat of acid, like legitimately, like, like realistically. Uh, but he definitely has like a monstrous face going on thing. And the shot where they have his eyes, his eyes are very cool. He's got a little bit of a cool eyebrow thing going. Uh, and then it pans down to the teeth. Then I was like, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. I was actually worried when the first images came out that the makeup and all that craziness was kind of obscuring the jokerness, the smile, the, whether it's a, like a highly polished, huge smile or a creepy one. Uh, but thankfully, after seeing that, it does seem like there is a focus on the teeth and the smile, so sick. I think the Joker played as a horror element can work, and I think that that Joker can really fit in this world. It is a little over the top, but it is in a movie that, like I said in my previous video, does a really good job of walking this line by like embracing some realism aspects, but also being a little weird and a little comic booky and find it, finding a good in between. And uh, this Joker look, I think can work. Personally, I'm more into like a clean Joker, a, a smooth Joker. <laughs> 
if you will. And I know it's like a weird take, but uh, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker and that world and that presentation they set up, as much as I respect the filmmakers just wanting to do a character study there, I do actually think that those vibes fit together well. Of course, the, the way they did it, it doesn't make sense, but I think he looks cool and I, I like that like it's still up for tweaking, it's still up for interpretation, it's still can be altered. I really just like the, the, the idea of the scene itself more than anything, the Joker uh, being introduced by Batman just visiting in, him in a cell. I think that's just badass. And in a comic, it's very, okay, whatever, another day in the life. Uh, but for a movie, that, that's pretty new. I also like that it is evocative of The Silence of the Lambs, one of my favorite movies. You know, some people thought it was a little too on the nose of like doing that thing, but I don't think, I don't know. I, I thought it was cool. I, I just like movies. But I did have trouble hearing what this Joker was saying. Of course, a lot of it was from the muffled, you know, radio talk, the two-way speaker, but uh, you know, it, it, his voice is interesting. I see a lot of people just saying that it's him doing an impersonation of Heath Ledger's Joker. And I, I don't know, so I'm up for different interpretations. I always say that. I, I like that, you know, some interpretations are obviously going to be offshoots or inspired by others. I think people just hear kind of like the low grumbly and like the hee 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 and, and think that's a little, you know, Heath Ledgery. And honestly, I still think to like go totally and make that declaration, it's still too early. I need to see a lot more of this guy. I need to see what he's gonna be wearing. I wanna see what he's gonna look like really done up. I wanna see how a movie will actually embrace him. Is he gonna be the chaotic element? Is he gonna be like this haunting, looming element? Is he just gonna be a pop-in character? How hard are they gonna really lean into the dynamic? You know, th th this little scene, as much as it was five minutes, it only gave, gave us little hints of how these two characters feel towards one another. But I gotta say, more than anything, I think it's just once again, however you feel about this Joker, which again, I'm a little still like wait and see on. Robert Pattinson's a really good Batman. Like that, that Batman squaring off against the Joker, really any Joker, that Joker could have been fricking, that, that Joker could have been Jared Leto Joker. But, hit, but him on the other side of the glass, Robert Pattinson, that Batman, I'm in. That Batman, I'll watch talk to any Joker. You know, we did see like the Batman themed shows take on uh, the Joker and, and make him gross there. I, I do think there's still opportunity to do an incredible over the top, you know, maybe like Hamill, like Man Who Laughs, like the actual, the reference, not the comic book, uh, style of the Joker, just like frightening Jay Leno ass face, perfect suit, wacky zaniness. Some people might say like, well, that might not work for this Matt Reeves Batman universe. I actually think it could. It could stand out and be totally weird. Then again, they're doing so much villain stuff and I, I do like what they're trying here and I do wanna see their takes on more things other than the Joker. Give us time, like let that Joker build out, but give us time to explore more here. We could have the Mad Hatter. We've talked about how, you know, Mr. Freeze could be something killer here. I've said in videos where I would love to see like one more try, one more take on Bane, or even weirder shit, I don't know. But uh, that's where this at, is at. I, I think it was just kind of fun to ch chat about this for a minute. I kind of look, I'm bursting at the seams when I see this stuff. And I don't really have too many people to yap about it with. So thank you for being here uh, and listening to me ramble about this stuff. I definitely want to know what you're thinking because everybody's going to have an opinion. Everybody's going to have a hot old Joker take. There's always a Joker hot take. So let me know yours, man. I welcome and I am open to any and all interpretations. So like, you know, I don't want to see anyone like shitting on anyone else's performance here or anything like that. That's not what I'm here for. But I'm now cautiously optimistic. So let me know how you are feeling. If you are the same way or another way, let's talk about the Joker. Let's talk about Matt Reeves' Batman. Let's talk about all this stuff. I love it. If you like hanging out with me, I'm just talking about stuff I love. Clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It helps me. But thank you for being here. I'm Jake Baldino. See you guys next time. Subscribe because video games and pizza's on me.